So let's get rid of that. You can see my project on the screen. And it is a stinking cute pets holiday treat. I'm going to pull out my little package. There is a tray of milk bone treats for the pooch. You can see I have them all lined up to help you create this little project. Now, this project is focused on the Pampered Pet Suite. So let me share with you where I'm getting all of my things from. So the Pampered Pet Suite is in the main catalog, pages 40 to 41. And this suite includes a Pampered Pets bundle. So that's a stamp set and dies. It includes the designer series paper. It includes the Playful Pets Trim Combo Pack. It includes the Playful Pets Trinkets, which are really sweet hearts and little bones. You can see a whole bunch of projects that Stampin' Up! has shared with us. When I turn the page, I can see the stamp set and uh, dies a little bit closer. So I've got treats in the treat jar. You can see the stamp set, the coordinating dies. Uh, the little set has both the dogs and the cats and a few sentiments to use, little, cute little hearts. This was the first suite I had to get with the new catalog. I love anything dogs, so of course I had to get this little set. I am also going to be pairing this. Here's, let me reach in front of you. I am pairing this with the printed gusseted cellophane bags. <laughs> they might have snuck past you. They are on page 152. So these gusseted bags, they come in a pack of 25 bags, only $7. They are perfect for storing treats. If you don't want to package them as I'm packaging them, you can just tie a pretty bow around them. They have like these little snowflake patterns on them, perfect for Christmas. That is my gift for you today if you place a $50 order. I am also using today's, uh, let's see, where am I? Oh, I thought I had all my pages marked. I am using the Stampin' Trimmer Plus. I am going to make it easy on myself today and use my Simply Scored scoring tool. So that's on page 151. That's my gift idea for the day. So if you have a crafting friend, this is a great tool. Um, it's a little bit easier to use for scoring than the paper trimmer is. I like to use both. The scoring tool comes with the scoring uh, tool. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. The Simply Scored scoring board comes with the scoring tool. So they're two in one. And I use them as well with my bone folder, my paper snips, but I'm also suggesting today that you add your pick a tool or take your pick tool, which is on page 159. You're gonna see where I'm gonna bring that in today. So that take your pick basic tool is $10, but you will want to add a refill of the putty and you might also want to add the dye brush tip. Those kind of coordinate all together to extend your tools. So that's what we are using today that's what I'm recommending that you add to your cramped crafting stash today and let me share with you the project and how we put it together I have a basic holder and I've got a tray of goodies now let's say you are not making treats for a pooch but you're making treats for a human I can help you out there as well this same little packaging accommodates three Kit Kat bars, so perfect little treat for the humans as well. Um, it's your choice. You can put either the chocolates or you can put the milk bones. You do not want to treat your pooch to the chocolates though, so think about who you're gifting here. I'm going to push that up to the top and bring in the supplies we're going to need. I mentioned I need my scoring tool, I need my paper trimmer, I need my pick a tool, my snips, my bone folder, and 
here are the paper supplies I'm gonna need. And I'm gonna use my little cheat sheet to help me out here. So I need the real red cardstock. I need a scrap of real red cardstock. I need a one inch by three or four inch smoky slate cardstock. I need a cinnamon cider that measures one inch by two and a half. This does need to be measured and cut precisely. And then I'm using the designer series paper, the Playful Pets paper, and I'm using the pattern that has the black background with all the puppy words on it, bark, woof, dig, chase, all the things that puppies love to do. Yay, Dixie, thank you so much. I love it when you tell me what you're thinking. I think it's super cute. One, because I love dogs. Anybody who knows me knows that. So I love to have a little gift on hand as well for the pooches. So this little designer series paper, it needs to measure two and a half by one and a half. And finally, I need one piece of Whisper White cardstock. This measures two and three quarters by four and a half. So there are the supplies I need. And I'm gonna share with you as well, if you like these little treats, a while back ago, I told you this was my first uh, suite that I purchased. Here was the class I created with the Pampered Pets. So here's the card holder. It was a card set. And I say was because I have been using my cards. <laughs> what a thought. Here is one of the little cards I created. I hope your day is a real treat. Here's a card we always need to have on hand, always in your heart, so sorry for your loss. So remember, the suite also has cats. So if you have cat-loving people in your, um, in your group or, that, or in your loved ones, you can always make the cat cards as well. Then I've got enjoy your day. So celebrating a dog's birthday, or celebrating a human's birthday. What I love about these cards is they can be cards from the dog or they can be cards for the dog. So these are the little cards I created early on using my Pampered Pet Sweets. Just wanted to show you some more ideas. And I will be using as well the trinkets, the ribbons, and I have used the dies, the coordinates, and the stamp set. And I'm going to be using a couple of punches that I'll share with you as I go along. So let me move these out of the way so I have a little bit of work surface. All right, so let's get started. Are you ready to make today's project? Here we go. A pet's holiday treat. I'm going to push that aside. I am going to bring in my Simply Scored. Before I do that, let me cut my paper down to size. So I need my stamp and trimmer, paper trimmer here, and I need my real red cardstock, and I am going to trim this down. And my dimensions on the real red cardstock, I need five and a quarter by seven and a half. So you can actually get two treat boxes. Well, I shouldn't say that. I'm gonna need the second piece for the tray. So let's say you can get one treat out of one card stock. So I need seven and a half. Right, measure, measure twice, cut once, seven and a half. Or don't measure at all and cuss twice because it's so frustrating if you've ever done it. I've got seven and a half there. And next, I'm going to move on. I'm going to rotate this to five and one quarter. So five and a quarter. There's the base of my box. Now I need to make a tray as well to stack the treats on. And this piece is going to measure three and a quarter by four and a half. So if I bring this in at four and a half, can actually get two trays out of this so I'm just trying to think economically here we go four and a half there and then I need three and three quarters so three and three quarters right here 
And there are my pieces. I'm gonna push my trimmer aside and I'm gonna bring in my scoring tool. So this is a great tool to have. It's a little bit less frustrating for scoring than the paper trimmer is at times. And you can see what I've done. I put the pins up at the top. That's gonna to help me with my scoring. All I have to do is push my box base up at the top and I've got the long side and I have put the pins where I need to score. So the first score line is going to be a half an inch. So I'm just gonna bring in my scoring tool that comes with the board. My next scoring is at three and a half. So let's see, one, two, three and a half right here where the pin is. The next one is at four. And then the next one is at seven. So we've got one half, three and a half, four, and seven. I'm gonna rotate this, and next I need to score. Let's see, I'm gonna do it the other way. I'm gonna score at half inch all the way down on the short side, and trying to hold it in place. This is where it's convenient if you're left-handed. <laughs> there we go. So now that is the base of our treat holder. I'm gonna bring in my tray and on the tray, I need to score at, let's see, I need to have it on the short side. I am going to score at half an inch. And then I'm gonna score at three and a quarter. So what that does is give me a half inch wall on each side. So half inch on this side and half inch on this side. That's my real red cardstock. That's all the scoring I need to do so I can put my scoring tool away. Next, I'm gonna come in and let's make the tray first. That's the easiest part. Here we go. I'm gonna bring in that uh, tray, which measures again, three and three quarters by four and a half. I need my bone folder. And I'm always gonna fold with the valley side out. So I'm gonna flip that over bring up that half inch, burnish that down, get rid of that little stray smoky slate, and I'm gonna do it the same on the opposite side. So there's my treat tray. Next, I am going to stack my little treats in there, and milk bone, milk bone, milk bone, and milk bones. So if your pooches are like mine, they love the treats. Here we go. I'm gonna slip this right into the gusseted cello bag. And remember, this is your gift from me today with a qualifying order. I'm just gonna push those all the way down to the bottom, trying to keep them intact. It's a little bit tricky, but just take it slowly and it'll go through. Just gonna push that in all the way down. Try to make that as flat as possible so it's nice and pretty. Like the pooches are gonna care, right? They just want the treats. Just hand over the treats. Okay, so you could choose to tie that up really pretty with a little bow. I just flipped it over and I used some good old fashioned. Let me see if I can get those pleats in right. Or those gussets. Let's see, I'm gonna flip it over flat. I'm gonna use some good old fashioned scotch tape. Hold that in position. And voila, there's my little treat tray. So that's ready to go. Now I'm gonna bring in that base that I cut and pre-scored for you. So this one again measures five and a quarter by seven and a half. Just a reminder, we scored it half inch then again at three and a half, at four, and seven. And then on the bottom, I scored at half inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my bone folder as well. I'm gonna score that down. So what do you think? Would you actually give these to a, a, a friend with a pet? I think when you arrive with gifts, it's always nice to have one on hand for everybody in the family. So these are stinking cute. If you wanna give treats to the humans, remember you can substitute in those little Kit Kat bars. 
That was the re recommendation from the spouse when he saw the treach. There you go. Maybe. <laughs> yes, Nikki, you noticed I painted my nails. <laughs> that is too funny. I am not one to get a manicure. I love my pedicures. Usually don't get the manicure. Uh, what do you think? I don't know. It makes my hands look a little bit nicer. I know Nikki and I have had a discussion about my hands in the past. So it's so kind of you to notice that, Nikki. Okay, so let's go back to the base of the box. I am at the half inch score at the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is cut up to the perpendicular scoring line right here. So just a little half inch snip. <laughs> yes, I know Nikki, you do notice the little details and sometimes that's really nice. I appreciate that. All right, so I'm scoring or cutting up there and cutting up here now on the far right i am going to do my little diagonal cut on that seam so i've got that cut down i'm going to do a little bit of debulking so on the little flaps i'm going to make my little uh, sliver cuts and here we go so easy this is easy to duplicate so you can probably come up with other things you could put in a little treat holder. All right, so we've got that done. Next, I'm gonna bring in my tear and tape. When I'm doing box construction, I love to use the tear and tape. It's easy to apply. It's not a struggle to reveal usually. And let me think this through because this is gonna be the front of the box and I want that seam going back. So I'm gonna put the tear and tape on this side down that little half inch panel. And hopefully I do this correctly. And I'm gonna burnish that down, that makes it easier to reveal. Then, when I close up the box, I'm gonna want that bottom flap going back. So I'm gonna put tape on the inside of that flap. And just a little strip there by the way because the extravaganza has been extended you have more time to shop tear and tape is one thing you might want to stock up on because again it is on sale just like this whole pampered pet suite so you can save 10 percent on the entire suite pretty awesome all right there's my box base i am not going to construct it yet though because we are going to decorate it first so let me push this aside I am going to bring in my Whisper White that measures two and three quarters by, let's see, four and a half. That is gonna be the backing of my decoration. I've pre-cut my DSP, Designer Series Paper, that's gonna be flat adhered to the white cardstock. Then I've pre-cut my one inch piece of cinnamon cider and notice how I right align one side and I left align the other side. And I'm using my favorite. You guys know my liquid glue is my go-to. It is so forgiving. And when <laughs> you make a bunch of goofs like I do, you appreciate that forgiveness once in a while. So let me just add a tiny trail. I'm not going to put too much on. I don't want it oozing out. And again, this is going to be right aligned and I'm bringing it up about three quarters of an inch. So nice thing that I have my grid paper down. I'm gonna find three little squares up and secure that down. And then I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna do the same with my cinnamon cider, but this time I'm going to left align it. So left align it and I'm gonna center it right between my black DSP. And you're gonna see you get one row of cute words at the bottom and a row of cute words at the top. So there we go. And I just realized I did not get my cut and emboss machine. I'm gonna to have to, to ad lib or I'm gonna to have to leave you for a second while I go grab it. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the Playful Pets Trim Combo, and here's another recommendation. This combo comes with two spools. They are both adorable. We have the 
white, the red with the white stitching, and we have the black and white twine. This is also on sale, and I would definitely get an extra supply of this ribbon. That red ribbon I use on so many projects, as well as the black and white twine. It's really handy to have, so pretty, so cute, and it goes with so many projects. You will run out of it quickly, so get do yourself a favor, get an extra pack. Now what I'm doing here, I'm bringing in one little glue dot that I'm gonna put towards the right. That's gonna help me secure my ribbon and my bow so I don't have to fuss with it. One more thing I wanna prep. I'm gonna bring in one of those cute little bone trinkets. And look at that, that's the last one in this container. That tells you how much I've used those, these little trinkets. And I'm gonna bring in about a six inch length of the black and white twine. So six inches here, I'm gonna cut it with my ribbon scissors there. And I'm gonna push that through on the cute little bone trinket. So what I'm using is one of those um, gum flossing tools. I, when the kids had braces, I used to have these all over the house. Now that I, they are done with the brace thing, I need these tools still and I'm running low. These are so easy to lose. Um, just place it back in your container so it'll be there when you need it. So I'm gonna thread that through. There we go. And that's way longer than you need, but trust me, you will not want to fuss with the short length of the twine. It makes the project frustrating when you have to fuss with things. So I'm gonna knot this. I'm just gonna bring the two ends together. And let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a little knot there. It's ready to go. I am gonna be putting that on my bow. And for the red stitched ribbon, I think I'm gonna take about 13 inches, more or less, doesn't have to be precise. Snip that off. And next I am going to tie my bow around and I wanna have almost half and half on each side so I can tie a nice bow here. I'm gonna bring those ends together and make sure I've got enough on each side to tie a pretty bow, push it into position and it's about a quarter inch from the top. I'm gonna just bring that down. Here's where the glue dot helps. So just push that down onto the glue dot. The little bow bone trinket comes in on the bottom tail of the ribbon. There we go. And now I'm ready to tie my bow. See how that glue dot helps? It's almost like having an extra hand in there with an extra finger. So I'm gonna do my loops. and tie that cute little bow. Bring that little bone down a little bit. And what I did, I wanna keep that bone in place. So I'm gonna get another glue dot and position it right behind the little trinket. Push that bone onto the glue dot so it stays in position. And when I'm done, I can come back in and trim the ends of all of those um, bows. So let's see, how are we coming along here? Now, here's where I run into a little bit of trouble. I did not bring my cut and emboss machine over. So let me continue on with this step Then I'm gonna take a quick break, run over and get that machine. I am going to stamp my Enjoy and my little hearts from my Pampered Pet stamp set. So I'm gonna bring in Enjoy and the hearts. And while I'm stamping, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the bowl on real red cardstock, just a little scrap. So let's start off with that. This one is gonna be hand snipped. There is no die for the bowl. It's pretty easy to hand snip though. Then I'm going to stamp my enjoy. And actually before I stamp, I'm gonna do my little um, dovetail cut on this. And for that, I'm gonna bring in my tailored tag punch. This is my favorite for making that little fork and ribbons. And I'm just gonna bring it in. You can kind of see how I bring the cardstock right up 
to the edges of that punch. There we go. Now it's easier to gauge where I want to stamp. So I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. I'm gonna stamp my Enjoy. And I'm gonna put some of those cute little hearts right at the top. So I'm just making a little banner with the sentiment. I'm finished inking. I'm gonna go ahead and hand snip my little red bowl. So I'm gonna make it easy on myself and snip that down and trim around. So this is the only paper snipping you're gonna to have to do. Not a big deal, just a couple little curves on the bowl. Doesn't take long at all. And I'm gonna do a little curve here on the bowl. There we go. And then this needs to be trimmed down to about one and a fourth inch. So I'm gonna bring back in my paper trimmer and trim this down. So right where the little tails are, I'm gonna bring it up to about one and a quarter and I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. There we go. So that is going to be positioned up here at the top of my decoration. And I, again, I'm gonna use flat adhesive and I'm gonna put it in the upper right, almost to the edge. I'm just gonna leave a little tiny white border there. And how about before I lose that little dog bowl, I am gonna secure it down. Otherwise, I'm gonna go crazy looking for it. I don't know if that happens to you, but I always lose things on my stamp table when it's right, and they're usually right in front of me. Okay, so I've got my little dog bowl. I am going to position this, it's kind of hard to grab things now, position this right over here. And I have one thing left to do on my little decoration, and here's where I need to leave you really quickly. So give me a sec, I need to go get my cut and emboss machine and I'll show you why. All right, got my machine ready to go, and I am going to be using the little dog on the designer series paper. I have, I can't tell you how many packs of these papers I've used already. One of the sheets has all the little pooches. There's also a sheet that has all the cats as well. So what I'm gonna do is take one of these little dogs and you could pick whichever dog you like. So kind of think about who you're gifting this to. My dogs, of course, are terriers. So I love this little terrier that's on the paper. It's already colored so nicely. And there is a dye in the uh, coordinating pet styes that has that little terrier. There are only, let's see, five dies in this little die set, which is perfect, it's all you need. All right, so now I need to bring in my, the way this works, I need my platform, and I love the way the instructions are on the platform here. Use with thin dies, and you know, these are the directions I'm reading right here. I need number one, which is this one, then I need number two, then I need three, which is happens to be the uh, pads, and then I'm going to need, let's see, pad on top and pad on bottom. There we go, so there's one, here's two, whoops. Then I need a cutting pad on the bottom, and you can see this pad has been loved. Then I need to put my paper, I need to put my die and try and keep it into position. Sometimes when it starts to move around, I use a tiny bit of washi tape. So it's nice to have washi tape handy at your cutting station as well. Then I'm going to go ahead and put my cutting pad on top. Push that down and crank it through. 
so easy that means when you use the little dogs on the paper you do not need to worry about coloring in your images it's ready to go and it's perfect so there we go I'm going to push these aside move the machine aside I've got my perfect die cut there you go and now I'm ready to position him on that layer and I am using Stampin' Dimensionals which by the way if they are still in stock are included in the sale this is another item that I stocked up on during the sale and I I think it's kind of convenient that the sale was extended by a day because I placed my order yesterday but I'm already realizing there are things that I did not include that I should have included on my order that Tarantate tape being one of the, the items now here we go I'm going to position my little dog right over top of the ribbon so I'm going to push that aside a little bit and I think I want him about here all right now my little decoration is ready remember this goes on the front of the box and the front of the box once I flip this over here's where you need to be considering this this is going to be the front panel so when I flip over I'm actually putting it on the right side so I'm going to apply that or adhere that with my liquid glue here we go and being a little bit generous with it I'm going to have about a one in one eighth inch border all the way around. There we go. And almost done, not quite. To have a little sneak of the treat inside, we're going to do a little tab tab up at the top. And I am using my one and a half inch punch, which happens to be retired so if you don't have the punch you could use one of the circle dies from the layering circles I love having the punches because it makes everything so easy now I'm gonna bring it in I'm gonna center it horizontally here and I'm gonna push in not all the way through just a tiny bit maybe uh, about a quarter way through and because we are going through several layers here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna kinda press down tighten up on that punch bring it over and I'm gonna put it on the tabletop because otherwise it's gonna be hard to punch through so nice pressure there I made my tab now I'm ready to construct the box so here we go here's where the magic happens I'm gonna flip that over I'm gonna bring in my pick a tool I hope it's handy or take your pick tool and I'm just gonna use that to lift and this is really helpful when you don't have any fingernails so this is going to go this way and what I do to align this correctly I'm going to bring the bottom up put it right up to abut it right to the score line and then I'm going to fold over and voila it's nicely aligned then I'm going to put this head down bring in the side flaps bring back or bring up the back flap and I'm going to reveal this layer of adhesive and I can go ahead and close this up secure that down and we are almost done last thing go ahead and insert your treats and voila the perfect holiday pet treat so cute the pets are going to love it oh let's go ahead and trim up our ribbons make it nice and pretty and I'm using my ribbon scissors cutting down that red ribbon and I like to put them on the diagonal cut and the twine is a little bit longer than I'd like so I'm going to trim that down and there you have it the pets holiday treats using the pampered pets 